Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working in module 2, lesson number 26. We are dividing decimal dividends by two digit divisors tonight. We are estimating quotients sometimes and we're reasoning about the placement of the decimal point all while making connections to the written method or the standard algorithm. So let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework and hopefully that'll help you with your homework tonight. Let's take a look at problem number 2. Problem number 2, the directions are pretty straightforward. Divide and we're going to check our work with multiplication. So let's take a look at 2b. 2b asks us to evaluate the following. We are going to look at 97 and 28 hundredths, or 97.28, and we're going to divide that by 19. So I'm going to first just set up my problem here. So our whole, ah, you know what, I need a bigger pen than that. Our whole is going to be bigger, let's see, it's going to be 97.28, and we're dividing by 19. Awesome. And then we'll just, over here, we'll do our, our check later on. So let's see, I need to see first my biggest units. My biggest units are these tens here. And my question, my first question for my big units is always, do I have enough of them to make a group of the dividend? And I don't have enough hundreds, I only have nine of them. I'm sorry, nine tens. I don't have enough to make a group of 19. So let me think about the, let me decompose those tens into ones and think about these units all together. That 97, that's 97 ones. And that gives me plenty of ones to start dividing up into groups of 19. I'm noticing this is very close to 20, and if it were 20 and 100, I'd be able to make five groups of 19, or five groups of 20 to make 100. I think that's going to work. Let me try that out. Let me try estimating five ones. Five ones. Let's see. Five times nine is 45. Let's see. There we go. 45. And five times one is five, plus the four is nine. And sure enough, we used up 95 of our 91 ones, leaving us just two ones remaining. Awesome. Now, previously we might have just said that's our remainder, but in our new version, we're going to go ahead and bring down the next smaller units and just keep working our decimal division. So let's see, we could think of our two ones as tenths, but we need our rest of our tenths. We've got two more tenths there. So it looks like we've got 22 tenths that we could divide out. Oh, and I'm reminded here something. We've got, our, we can line up our decimal points here because we had five ones, and that means our next part of our quotient is gonna be, uh, is gonna be tenths. So let's see, if we had 22 tenths and we tried to make a group of 19, we could make one, right? We'll make one group, definitely couldn't make two. Make one group of tenths, so one times 19 is 19, and I find that I've used up all but three of our tenths. So we've got our tenths left, and now we still have to we still have more smaller units to bring down. So let's see, we had eight hundredths plus these three tenths, so that's thirty hundredths. So that gives us thirty-eight hundredths to work with. And thirty-eight hundredths, wow, that is super convenient, because I think I could make two groups of nineteen out of thirty-eight. That'd be two groups of hundredths. Let's see, so that's two times nineteen is thirty-eight. And that means we've used up all of our hundredths and we're done with our division. It looks like our quotient is 5 and 12 hundredths. Now we can check our work. I'm going to check in red over here. We can check our work by multiplying 5.12, or 5 and 12 hundredths, times 19, and seeing if we get our whole. So we need to do two partial products, it looks like. So let's see, 9 times 2 is 18 ones. There's 18 ones. 9 times 1 is 9 tens, plus one more is 10 tens that out. Then 9 times 5 hundreds, let's see, is 45 plus 1 is 46. 46, okay. And let's see, we got our second partial product. 1 times 2 is 20, or 2 tens. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 5 is 5. Now we need to add up our partial products. Let's see, 8 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 2 is 2, 6 plus 1 is 7, and 4 plus 5 is 9. And then I'm also got to remember here, I essentially treated this like 512 instead of 5.12. So essentially, I, div I multiplied this by 100 uh, before treating this number. So at the end, I need to divide by 100. And the way we divide by 100 is we move our, two, our, our decimal place two values to the left. And so rather than 9,728, 9, I have 97 and 28 hundredths, and that is exactly what my whole is. So I have gone ahead and I have double-checked my division, and I'm good to go. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. 
Problem number four. It's a little less of a calculation problem and more of a thinking problem. Let's take a look at the directions. Use the equations on the left to solve the problems on the right. Explain how you decided where to place the decimal in the quotient. Well, let's see. So they give us, in 4a, they kind of give us a completed math sentence. They say that 520 and 3 tenths divided by 43 equals 12 and 1 tenth. So they give us that as a given here. We don't have to do any calculations. We just know that. And then they ask us this question. What about 52 and 3 hundredths divided by 43? Well, so I'm going to kind of look for a pattern here. Let's see. I see, I'm noticing right away that the, uh, the dividend here I'm sorry, the divisor here is exactly the same, right? We're, in both cases, we're dividing by 43. And I'm also noticing that the dividend is very similar. This dividend, 520 and 3 tenths, and this one, 52 and 3 hundredths, all the same digits. In fact, I'm noticing that this one over here seems to just be 10 times as big as the one over here, right? It seems like if we started with this number and we multiplied by 10s, we would get this number. Or to put it another way, if we started with this number and divided by 10, I think we would get this number. So I'm thinking we can maybe use this to our advantage. If we could figure out how to express this using this little tidbit, we would be in good shape. So let's see. I'm going to say, hmm. I'm going to say, let's see. Well, 5, let's see, 5203 times... 10 divided by 43, as long as we divided by 10, would be the same thing, right? Hmm. Like, if we took this number, 52 and 3 hundredths, and we multiplied it by 10, and then later divided by 10, we wouldn't really change the value. But I'm seeing something that once I've done that, I can say, well, 52.03, well, that's 520 and 3 tenths, right? This part right here is 520 and 3 tenths, right? This number times 10 is this number. And now, I'm going to divide by 43 and then later divide by 10. Now I'm noticing that this part right here is exactly what this is, right? Let's see, 520.3 divided by 43, that's exactly what this is. So I'm going to group this together. Again, we have a commutative power, right, of multiplication and division. And we can go ahead and group those two. So now we actually know what that value is. That value is 12.1. So I'm just going to say, well, that's 12.1. All I need to do now is divide it by 10. 12.1 divided by 10, well, I'm going to move everything one place value to the right. So my 10s are going to become 1s, my 1s are going to become 10s, and my 10s are going to become 100s. And I think I'm going to come up with the answer of 1.21. Let me just ask, lastly, does that make sense? Let's see. When we started with 520, we ended up with 12. When we start with a number that's a tenth as big, we end up with an answer that's exactly a tenth as big, right? We have we end up with 12.1 divided by 10, or 1 and 20, excuse me, 21 hundredths. So I think that works out. I think we can use what we know about this complicated expression to figure out this problem without doing any extra and anything extra beyond mental math. Awesome. Um, let's see. We have to explain how we uh, explain how we decided. Well, let's see. Um, I'm going to type here. I'm going to say we recognized that the expression on the right was the same as the one on the left divided by ten. That helped us place the decimal. I'm gonna spread this out, otherwise we'll never get that. That helped us place the decimal. Awesome. And of course, I typed that out because of course my handwriting is never gonna hold up for that amount of uh, for that amount of words. So I hope you've enjoyed another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. We'll see you again next time. Good luck with your decimal division. Take care.